One. Ignition. There we go. You see some white boards falling off. Is that considered normal? That's yeah, yeah, yeah. So that keeps the temperature. Shield, right? It's like insulation. Yeah, power is clear. All right, we're going to see a number of critical stages throughout the flight. We're going to be walking you through and every one of them, well, that's starting the with the pitch over. That's the moon shot, Very soon. Yes. <laughs> So this is the camera mounted on the carrier rocket. Mm -hmm. View of the side boosters. Yeah. If everything goes right momentarily, we're going to see the jettison of the escape tower, right? No, if, yeah. yes. About 120 seconds. Mm -hmm. So that's the first critical movement we're yeah, going to see. Exactly. This is the infrared view of the rocket. Yes. Everything is going well. The Tiger Mounts look uh, fine to me. They are experiencing the forces now. Mm -hmm. How many G-forces are they enduring uh, I mean, now? Uh, the maximum is uh, during the separation of the first stage, uh, okay. about three to five G. Mm -hmm. All right. So this is this tends to be a period where they can experience discomfort yeah, um, yeah. in the flight. Yeah. As you mentioned, uh, the G forces are together with the vibration. Mm -hmm. A movement what we call a pogo, which is up and down movement. You know, yeah. faster and slow, mm -hmm. faster and slow, like mm -hmm. up and down. So, so that, that is, pogo is very uncomfortable. Yeah. That is because we use the liquid propellant system. We're about 90 seconds into the flight. Okay. Once again, you're seeing the bright flame of the side so boosters, up first speed. stage rocket. So mm -hmm. the emergency escape tower will be just in the soon. Yeah. It has already completed the pitch over, right? Yeah. About 12 seconds after the lift off. Mm -hmm. We see the mm. escape tower and then the strap on booster. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's the 3D animation yes. of this uh, flight. That's based on real telemetries. Okay, there great. you go. Yeah. The That's escape, escape tower, tower jettison. At about 153 seconds will mm -hmm. be the separation of the four uh, strap-on boosters. Yes. And that separation we just saw there really indicates a successful initial lower level flight. They were doing okay. Mm -hmm. Not until the first separation, first stage. Mm -hmm. We see this one will be happening anytime. Right. I think it's happening now. Separate soon. The boosters will come off momentarily. Mm -hmm. um, of course, this is a critical, this is the most dangerous great. part, right? Of the line. Okay. The boosters are off. Booster separation. And then first stage separation. And then the first stage separation. You see we the can four see, yeah. light part, that's the, the strap on booster. Yes. The and first stage is already yeah. separated. Five, yeah. there. Mm -hmm. The four little dots are the boosters, the one bigger dots are the first stage rockets. With so each stage about, accomplished. Uh, 210 seconds will be the uh, separation of the payload, uh, jettisoning of the payload fairings mm. because mm. the altitude is already very high. So at, at this moment, the aerodynamic forces is already become weaker and weaker mm -hmm. because the max, uh, max Q has already been passed. I believe you're getting a visual of the second stage engine. And the this second is stage the view has, Bearing. Yeah, the second stage has a main engine with a thrust about 75 tons and four vernier engines to control its attitude. Mm -hmm. On left side, you can see it's folded uh, solar panel. So, so the fairing has oh, been separated. Successful so this is the folded uh, solar array mm -hmm. that is going to be deployed. So that's a camera feed looking at the right. solar array. So. Yes, and that's the exterior of the spacecraft, actually. Now the spacecraft is entirely exposed in space. Fairing it's already open. in outer space with no atmosphere, so mm -hmm. fairing it, that, it doesn't help anyone. And it has already escaped the Earth's atmosphere at this point, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. It's already high enough, and Ya Ping at this moment can enjoy the sightseeing outside the window. But it's all dark outside the window. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, it's all dark. But they will see daylight very soon, minutes. You know, I'm, you know they're, they're circling like 90, 90 uh, they are, uh, They are flying eastward. So as Yan Song has mentioned, we will see, uh, because you know that uh, it's in the different Mm -hmm. We Enough? can see the working conditions of the rocket engines on the second stage. Right. And for a first time traveler, Ye Guangfu is pretty is pretty yeah, he's not, <laughs> composed there. He I hasn't even said, looked outside the window. I was once. gonna say that. I was gonna say that. <laughs> Probably because it's dark right now. There's nothing much to see there's there. There's not much to see. He's waiting for more light, uh, so he can get a better visual.
they're going to get a mic, uh, my zero G in any moment, at any moment now. So once you have a shutdown, they have a zero G very. So you know, when will be the time they endure the, the uh, when all the when all the engines were shut, shut down, down. Okay. Uh, the, they will experience the zero G. So there is an indicator inside the cabin. And you can, you can no, you may notice that because now it is already in a vacuum condition, and the flame of the rocket engines, the shape is quite different from when it is lifting off. And they look pretty all right. To I me. don't know how they do it. They look so cool, calm, collected. Um, just as they are on the ground, no G forces at all. Just as if they're all. on the ground, it's it's amazing to look at. The next critical movement we're going to see is the shutdown of the second stage engine and then the spacecraft separation. Uh, yes, uh, first we will shut down the main engine mm -hmm. and then the four vernier engines. Is there anything that the astronauts can do to offset the effect of high g-forces? Uh, at this moment, as we mentioned, it is in the normal procedure, so the, uh, the, the maximum g-force is only three to five, uh, so they have the capability to monitor the uh, status of the uh, spacecraft. Mm. And we can see from the animation just in the previous video that uh, shows the, uh, the radio beams of mm -hmm. the ground stations to the vehicle. And at this moment, the videos we can see of the camera is uh, downloaded uh, to the ground stations. Mm -hmm. So the ground staff can also monitor the working conditions of the rocket engines. Mm. And Flight Commander Jai Jigan is sitting in the middle, Wang Yaping over there, picking up her manual, again. taking a look at it <laughs> again. The book again. So <laughs> I think the newcomer is testing when to have the zero G and the, he's, he's so ready. Well, that's the fun part, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> but with the with the four or five Gs, it really doesn't uh, affect too much the human bodies. Um, you know, you get the the, the adrenaline, this mm. uh, thrill mm -hmm. out of it. Uh, but the human body can That's take... the ultimate adrenaline thrill. <laughs> <laughs> That's the ultimate adrenaline thrill. That is, for sure. The maximum, uh, human, the maximum human can take is 12 or 13 Gs. Mm -hmm. And even more so for the first comer, for the first time traveler, Ye Guangfu, right? He's done years of years of training. Time he won't be flying in a simulator no more. This is the real deal. This is the real deal. And only in the real flight he can experience both the G forces and the vibration. Looks like we have a good burn of the engine and the telemetry tracking is good. Um, we're going to have a shutdown any moment. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're here in the call out. Okay, the main engine has shut off. Second stage shutdown. Now you can see the vernier engine, the four engines are still working now okay. to adjust its trajectory to ensure the accuracy of the orbit. Mm -hmm. and I, I keep looking if they are having any kind of communication because I would imagine that the two veterans mm -hmm. would try to you know talk the new one through it they would comfort him but that's not happening <laughs> which shows that you have real they have confidence. Complete trust they have complete in him. trust and confidence. <laughs> um, yeah, the forward. post of the WeChat movie Yaping has showed this, support your opinion. <laughs> mm. I'm sure they have plenty to talk in the coming six months. Mm -hmm. And her daughter also comes to the Jiuqian Satellite Launch Center for to her mother. watch the launch, wow. Yeah. What a proud moment. Mm -hmm. And this is the view of the solar panel still folded outside the spacecraft. Later we will see the deployment of that solar panel indicating a successful launch yeah. mission. And that is usually the time we can hear the loudest cheerings and applauding from the control room. Yaping also uh, shows the uh, pictures of her daughter uh, Zhao Yunxi uh, in her uh, WeChat moments of uh, her daughter's daily life, like other young mothers. <laughs> At the end of the day, she's just another mother. Um, <laughs> Well, she's such a great inspiration for the girls out there, right? No a doubt. mother, a, no a great wife, and also an Can you imagine an if she astronaut. gives another space-based lecture mm -hmm. to all the young Chinese yeah. students looking up to her? Yeah. Eight that years. would be a huge inspiration. Yeah. Eight years I after believe. the first time she gave the lesson, that was watched by over 60 million children. Imagine that. Okay. That's the successful spacecraft separation. Okay, that 3D animation is showing you 
the spacecraft flying on itself. It's a three-part module, a three-module spacecraft, as you can see. On your right is the uh, orbital module. In the middle is the reentry module, where the three astronauts are sitting. On your left is the service module. Right. Opposite. Uh, so uh, the next uh, critical step will be unfolding of the solar panels. Mm -hmm. Zero G, as they're enjoying now. Oh, this is the microgravity. Uh, it's already in the microgravity yeah. environment. Floating mm -hmm. time. So this is first time Mr. Ye Guang experienced it. Wow. So there are no pens around this time. I believe that the, 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 the last time we saw yeah. some pens floating as so soon as they hit. Oh, there you see. Floating manual yeah. is playing okay, with that's it. That's a zero G indicator. <laughs> that's the point of the book. <laughs> Whose book is that? You're going full. Uh, he's, he's showing off. Now he is a naughty boy. <laughs> now you want the pen? <laughs> now the minute it asks for the pen, the pen what is happening. What picture do you want? <laughs> yes. So he has fulfilled the team's dream to come into outer space. You can tell who's the new person among the crew. I mean, look at the other two. <laughs> well, you see that Mr. Yu Guangfu is the uh, fourth uh, astronaut of China coming to orbit of the second batch of oh, China's wow. astronauts. Okay. Uh, but it is very unique that, you know, that usually we do not, do not release the names of the astronauts before their flight missions. But uh, Mr. Yu Guangfu is an exception because mm. he attended the uh, trainings in Europe, the cave trainings. So uh, mm. his uh, name is well known by Chinese and Europeans. Mm -hmm. And China has only selected three batches of astronauts so yes. far, right? Yes. So you want uh, to believe to the second the batch. The second batch. That uh, was being selected when? In uh, which year? Mm, uh, about uh, maybe more than a 10 more years 15, before. 15 mm. years. Yeah. Mm. So and none of the other members, except for Ye Guangfu from that second batch, uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Chen Dong, Mr. Tang Hongbo, uh, oh, are also, and uh, together with Ya Ping and Liu Yang, all these are belong to the second batch. So, so now we younger. have, yeah. So now we have uh, five uh, astronauts uh, who have been belong to the second batch coming to orbit. Okay. Oh. You are seeing the three D animation showing you the deployment of solar panels. We are waiting for the final confirmation. Oh, that's the call out there. Successful deployment of solar panels. That's uh, Chinese Vice Premier Han Zheng there, and also the Vice Chairman of China's Central Military Commission, Liang. They are watching there uh, at the Beijing Control Center. That's earlier. This is the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. This is the control room. Once again, they're all watching this uh, very closely. There you see Mr. Zhang Youxia, uh, the Vice Chairman of Central Military Commission, watching at the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center. And this is a younger crew we are seeing. It's, uh, they are, on average, six years younger uh, than the previous crew, the Shenzhou 12 crew. Right, we've got... Uh, Flight Commander Jai Jigang, 55, 55 years old, and uh, Flight Engineers Wang Yaping and Ye Guangfu, both 41. Shenzhou 13, I'm Beijing. They're trying to communicate with the astronauts, the ground staff. They're asking the astronauts to report health their status. health conditions mm -hmm. and the cabin status. status. That's the voice, That's the voice of Commander Jai Jigang and saying that uh, the Taikonauts are feeling fine, he and his colleagues, and that cabin status is normal. It is always the duty of the commander to report the of all the crew members mm. after it comes into the orbit. Mm. So what's going to happen next? What can we expect uh, next? So, uh, you know, that next as they will uh, open the hatch between the orbital module and the uh, re-entry capsule, and uh, they will be more comfortable, and may, they will change their suit to a common suit, uh, rather the than the suit. IBA space, uh, not the penguin suit, but uh, the uh, <laughs> common suit, because uh, they will, it will last uh, 6.5 
uh, six point five uh, hours for them to uh, before they go into the station. But before docking, they will wear their IBA spacesuit again because it is a dangerous procedure for the docking. For the docking. There seems to be uh, increased communication. Oh, they're, oh, they're opening, up their, opening face up their face shields. Getting a feel of the microgravity environment, stretching their legs for a bit. And the book again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the book again. I can't believe they're still <laughs> reading the book. I mean, no, they have to follow the procedures, yes. I would love to get a look at that book and what's in it. <laughs> Usually, the successful deployment of solar panel indicates a successful launch, and we're standing by for that official announcement That's great. from the launch center, confirming this is a successful launch. Uh, and also, we should check the orbital parameters to see if it is accurate enough. Mm -hmm. Only in this case, we can uh, the, the ground oh, uh, commander can announce that it is a successful launch, mm -hmm. because uh, the accuracy of the orbit is also very important. These pictures are from earlier. This is a replay of the stand-up ceremony. This is a playback of that stand-up ceremony earlier today. It was yesterday, Beijing time. <laughs> a couple hours ago. A couple hours ago, uh, before they were transported to the launch pad. As we have just heard from background, that the uh, parameters has came came up. The inclination is correct, uh, 41.3. Yeah. And then the uh, apogee and perigee has been 200 kilometers and 360. 50, 50. Uh, six. Six. Yeah. Wow. So uh, that is a, a you know a electrical orbit. And then uh, in the far point, the, the closer point is 200 kilometers to Earth, and far point is very close to the station. So uh, 